Hello everyone and welcome to SE Geek Bootcamp. I am your host, Software Engineer Geek, and today we're going to give you an intro to computers. So sit back and download a cup of knowledge, because SE Geek begins now. Okay, this is the first Programming 101 with Groovy video that I'm doing uh, in the Boot Camp series. Uh, going, it's going to be very introductory. Uh, I've already done a lot of uh, videos with Groovy. This is more for people who have you know no real experience programming. Uh, the one exception uh, to this that uh, that I'm thinking of because you know there has to be you know some assumptions of you know, I, I expect that you can actually get to a computer, you know, use a mouse, use a keyboard, things of that nature. So I'm not going to go quite that introductory, but I am going to be going very introductory here. Um, and we'll we'll go from there. So first uh, lesson, we're just going to be talking about uh, computers in general. So computer is pretty much like a big calculator. You know, you get the one plus one. You know, and all it understands, uh, all a computer really understands on the underneath is just strings of ones and zeros. Now, you know, if at this point you're probably wondering, it's like, well, how does that relate to programming? Because you know, you know, programmers do not just enter ones and zeros all day. It'd be impossible to understand that. Well we write in programming languages that actually get, you know, translated to the ones and zeros. So, you know, in, in uh, computer language, you know, obviously z zero is zero, one is one. Now, if you go, you know, way down deep, uh, two would actually be one zero, one three. So there's a lot of these translations that happen in the underneath, which you don't really need to worry about for programming. Uh, that much, but it's it's good to understand that they're there, and you know, it's part of knowing about these translations will kind of help you uh, later uh, when just knowing, uh, you know, with other uh, types of concepts that are actually fairly similar. Uh, but we'll get to those later. So you know, as I said, computers pretty much a big calculator. So we're going to actually go up here and look at some pictures of my computer. So I, I took these just to, you know, so I could uh, have something for you to look at while I'm explaining uh, these different concepts. So this is like the inside of a actual desktop computer. Now with a laptop computer, think the same thing, but, you know, a little more flatter and just, you know, packed a little differently. But with here, you actually get to see all the components. Um, this is only part of my computer, but you know, you see this big part with this big fan. Underneath that is the uh, processor. So, in terms of a computer, its brain is the processor. That's what processes all the ones and zeros. You know, this is where you know most of the magic of the computer happens. It's you know a big, just number crunching machine. But before we get too far into that, um, let's see. Let's go back here. Another view of my uh, computer. Um, this big thing is a power supply. The processor is actually over here. There's a video card, and I'll explain all those in a moment. This is a uh, hard drive. So we'll actually turn this around. And all right, let's talk about the hard drives for a moment. So this is the traditional hard drive, which is uh, it has a spinning disk in here, and the disk is uh, where all those ones and zeros get stored for long-term storage. So you know everything that uh, you know, all the files that you have on your computer, anything you ever download, uh, actually viewed or, or view temporarily at least gets stored on here. Uh, or for long term get stored on here as well. Um, in recent years, we have something called an SSD drive, which uh, just you, you know it's very you know similar concept. It's a hard drive, 
but it uses a different kind of technology called uh, flash memory in order to store it. So there's actually no moving parts in here. It's kind of like uh, if you see, you've seen uh, thumb drives that you know hold information. This is kind of like a big version of that. But this is where all your data actually gets stored initially. So um, and where you load uh, programs from. So when you program uh, something, you'll actually store your programs on you know the hard drives, and that's where your programs will live you know initially until you actually load or run them. Now, when you actually load them, come back to this picture, they get uh, moved into something called RAM or random access memory which is what these little sticks are. Now, you know, if you look at different computers, they'll look, you know, vaguely different here and there, but these are just, you know, different computer chips. And this one just happens to be, you know, have a fancy red uh, heat, uh, uh, heat sink on it, which heat sink just dissipates heat so that, you know, the, the chips don't overheat. So when you load a program, it goes from your hard drive to RAM, or if you had like a CD-ROM, this is a back of a CD-ROM disk, it would load into RAM and then go back and forth between the processor and the RAM. So RAM's kind of like short-term uh, memory, it, and it's a lot faster than the hard drive is. So, you know, it loads into RAM, and then it goes kind of back and forth between the CPU of processing and storing things, you know, because it needs to keep, uh, you know, whatever it's running in RAM when it's using it. So also we'll go back here. There's a video card which, you know, uh like its name, this is what actually produces the video images and sends it out to your display, which you know you're watching right now. Um and I mentioned this before, it's just power supply which, you know, provides power to the whole computer. So those are the basic internal components of a computer and it's it's a good idea it's good just to know that they're there and you know just have a basic sense of what they're doing in terms of programming now there uh, this is just a very high level there are you know more complexities to this um but you know th this is just the basic knowledge of you know hard drive uh you know is long term storage slow you know slower than say ram or memory which is like the short term storage and the processor which just processes everything and all of you know everything that gets you know sp uh that goes through all these circuits you know is in your programming terms at the very low level is a bunch of ones and zeros so let's talk a little bit about these ones and zeros so um just to give you a, uh, a little bit more. Uh, so I told you, you know, the, the one and, you know, two would be one zero and three would be one one. So what this is called is binary. So binary is, you know, what's the underlying, you know, ones and zeros. That's, it's kind of, kind of like uh, the language, you know, very underlying language. Now we're going to go like uh in this uh in these tutorials that I use a much higher level language which you know we call groovy. But in between that, you know, obviously binary is like the lowest common denominator. Uh above that uh which you know no one deals with binary cuz they they need a programming language to push that around. They have uh assembly and uh that's you know basically and every processor uh or cpu ha and actually i should say what a cpu is a cpu is a central processing unit so you know you, you you'll hear processor and cpu used interchangeably um but e all of those have a specific assembly language which uh is uh you know made specifically for that processor because it knows how to execute certain uh, instructions. Now, on top of that, we have something called Java, which uh, is another language, which is you know quite a bit higher level, and uh, its uh, environment is called the um, Java 
virtual machine. So Java virtual machine. And actually Groovy sits on top of that. So you, you one of the things that you're, you you should be starting to see here is there there are many layers upon layers here. And uh, basically, you know, once you get through all these, you know, once you go to these higher level languages like Groovy, things become a lot easier than, say, you know, programming in Java, which is, you know, it, Java is still a high level language, but, you know, Groovy is a, is a, you know, I'd say almost a little bit higher than that. Um, and, and I'll show you uh, in examples in other uh, videos. And assembly is very low level, but and the the the, the thing uh, one of the things to keep in mind with these different levels is, uh, you know, sometimes you can eke out uh, different uh, performance with a lower level language than with a higher level language because the higher level language is doing a lot more for you, but you know it, unless you actually really need that. You shouldn't worry about it too much. And in the context of these videos, performance is not something that you're going to be worried about too much. Um, before I go, a few other things I just want to say about these uh, tutorials uh, going forward is they are not, and I repeat, not a substitute for uh, actual real uh, you know, education or a degree or anything like that. These are just to get you started, some pragmatic tutorials to start to understand programming and what you can do with it. Uh, programming uh, is kind of like a, a way of just uh, thinking of how, uh, how to do problem solving. Yeah, if I can spell. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and I, I, I agree with, I saw a... Uh, Oh, an interview the other day with uh, Steve Jobs, who was you know one of the really uh, you know kings of the you know programming and uh, actually hardware industry, being uh, the head of Apple, and he said that you know he thought that everyone should learn how to program because it it kind of uh, teaches you a different way of thinking and uh, you know problem solving, which I I, I agree with. Um, but as I said, this is not going to, you know, you're, you're not going to become, you know, the magical programmer overnight, uh, you know, able to do, you know, all kinds of crazy stuff. But this is a good uh, place to start. So I think I'll close with that and I'll uh, talk to you next time.